The bus pulled into Fort Stockton at quarter to nine, and Moss stood and got his bag down from the overhead rack and picked up the document case out of the seat and stood looking down at her. Don't get on an airplane with that thing, she said. They'll put you under the jail. My mama didn't raise no ignorant children. When are you going to call me? I'll call you in a few days. All right. You take care. I got a bad feeling, Llewellyn. Well, I got a good one. So they ought to balance out. I hope so. I can't call you except from a payphone. I know it. Call me. I will. Quit worrying about everything. Llewellyn. What? Nothing. What is it? Nothing. I just wanted to say it. You take care. Llewellyn. What? Don't hurt nobody. You hear? He stood there with the bag slung across his shoulder. I ain't making no promises, he said. That's how you get hurt. Bell had raised the first forkful of his supper to his mouth when the phone rang. He lowered it again. She'd started to push her chair back, but he wiped his mouth with his napkin and rose. I'll get it, he said. All right. How the hell do they know when you're eating? We never eat this late. Don't be cussing, she said. He picked up the phone. Sheriff Bell, he said. He listened for a while. Then he said, I'm going to finish my supper. I'll meet you there in about 40 minutes. Just leave the lights on on your unit. He hung up the phone and came back to his chair and sat and picked up the napkin and put it in his lap and picked up his fork. Somebody called in a car a fire, he said just this side of Lozier Canyon. What do you make of that? He shook his head. He ate. He drank the last of his coffee. Come go with me, he said. Let me get my coat. They pulled off the road at the gate and drove over the cattle guard and pulled up behind Wendell's unit. Wendell walked back and Bell rolled down the window. It's about a half mile down, Wendell said. Just follow me. I can see it. Yes, sir. It was going real good here about an hour ago. The people that called it in seen it from the road. They parked a little way off and got out and stood looking at it. You could feel the heat on your face. Bell came around and opened the door and took his wife's hand. She got out and stood with her arms folded in front of her. There was a pickup truck parked a ways down and two men were standing there in the dull red glare. They nodded each in turn and said, Sheriff, we could have brought wieners, she said. Yeah, marshmallows. You wouldn't think a car would burn like that. No, you wouldn't. Did you all see anything? No, sir, just the fire. Didn't pass nobody or nothing? No, sir. Does that look to you like about a 77 Ford, Wendell? It could be. I'd say it is. Was that what the old boy was driving? Yeah, Dallas Plates. It wasn't his day, was it, Sheriff? It surely wasn't. Why do you reckon they set fire to it? I don't know. Wendell turned and spat. Wasn't what the old boy had in mind when he left Dallas, I don't reckon, was it? Bell shook his head. No, he said. I'd guess it was about the farthest thing from his mind. In the morning when he got to the office, the phone was ringing. Torbert wasn't back yet. He finally called at 9.30 and Bell sent Wendell to get him. Then he sat with his feet on the desk, staring at his boots. He sat that way for some time. Then he picked up the mobile and called Wendell. Where are you at? Just past Sanderson Canyon. Turn around and come back. All right. What about Torbert? Call him and tell him to just set tight. I'll come get him this afternoon. Yes, sir. Go to the house and get the keys to the truck from Loretta and hook up the horse trailer. Saddle my horse and Loretta's, and load, and I'll see you out there in about an hour. Yes, sir. He hung up the speaker, and got up, and went down to check on the jail. They drove through the gate, and closed it again, and drove down along the fence about a hundred feet, and parked. Wendell unlatched the trailer doors, and led the horses out. Bell took the reins of his wife's horse. You ride, Winston, he said. You sure? Oh, I'm more than sure. Anything happens to Loretta's horse, I can tell you right now. You damn sure don't want to be the party that was aboard him. He handed Wendell one of the lever-action rifles he'd brought and swung up into the saddle 
and pulled his hat down. You ready? he said. They rode side by side. We've drove all through their tracks, but you can still see what it was, Bell said. Big off-road tires. When they got to the car, it was just a blackened hulk. You were right about the plates, Wendell said. I lied about the tires, though. How's that? I said they'd still be burning.